This is the Vamax X4 Roadster electric skateboard, and this is the Hover X1 fully autonomous drone. This entire review has been shot using this amazing tiny drone, which at a touch of a button will follow me around, stay in front of me, orbit me, zoom out, and in, and much more. So is this skateboard any good? And is this drone going to crash? Let's find out. But yes, the drone will crash and it will attack me. It's got two 550 watt motors, which are in the hubs, which means they're inside the wheels. The wheels aren't just your standard polyurethane street wheels. They're kind of like cloud wheels. So they're 105 millimeters, which means they can go over some rougher stuff. So if there is a bit of rough ground on your commute, this board will be just fine. That was one of the few times I actually managed to get the drone to record the audio. It doesn't sound great because it's only really picking up the voice and it's squelched everything out. But part of the reason is because I use an external microphone and that's what the external microphone does. It actually sounds a bit better when it takes the audio directly from the phone. The board comes with a 1.7 amp charger that charges the board in two and a half hours. Instruction manual, a T-tool for adjusting stuff, screws, charge cable for the remote, the remote and some rear light. So as it drops start like it is right now, people can see you. They're charged via USB-C and they just slot on the back really easily. The board has got a top speed of 29 miles an hour. That drone's got a top speed of 15 miles an hour. Let's see if it can catch me. Let's test out the brakes at 20. Whoa, hello. If you're enjoying this video, then now would be a great time to hit that thumbs up button. Maybe it'll stop the drone hitting me in the face. Whoa, hello. Woo. Thank you very much. Nice thing about this board is that it's got these nose protectors, which means if I wanted to, I could just put it down here and it'd be absolutely fine. I don't have to worry about wrecking the nice deck which by the way is eight layers of bamboo and one layer of fiberglass. It's a very nice deck, as you can see, with the logo, the Vamax logo. It's got the arrow pointing it the right way. Mine's got blue wheels, but when you buy it, it actually comes with gray wheels. I just asked if I could have blue. Underneath, you've got the battery compartment and the ESC compartment, the electronic speed controller that look very, very futuristic, especially that bit, I really like it. And I like that Vamax logo as well, very nice. The trucks, and no brand trucks, but they seem okay. Now being a hub board, it hasn't got the most torque off the line. I'm in the top speed mode right now, and I've just floored it. I'm 100 kilograms. Come on! Ugh. So it will get up to for me, about 25 miles an hour, not the 29, but I am 100 kilograms. So it is pretty fast eventually, but off the line, it's not the fastest. The Vamax X4 completed the Sandy Lane hill climb in one minute 14.11, which actually makes it the slowest electric skateboard we've had up the hill, slower than the two times 450 watt outdoor master cruiser. But it was still faster than all of the e-scooters and most of the e-bikes. I did film the hill climb, but I used the 360 camera because I didn't want overtaking cars to hit and possibly run over the drone. Now the deck has got a slight concave, not a massive concave, but you can feel it, which means you kind of know where your feet are at all times, which is nice. It's got a Ling Yi electronic speed controller, which means it's got four brake modes. You can adjust it by holding back on the brake and then pressing the speed mode. Let's test out the pro brakes. Oh, that's pretty good. Another great thing about the Ling Yi SC is that it will just stop in place. So if I pull the brake like that, it's pretty solid. So if you're a learner, you can kind of jump on knowing that you're not just going to go, ah! so that's really nice. That audio was recorded through the phone using the drone. And as you could hear, it wasn't too bad, actually. A lot better than it sounded when I was using the phone with wireless microphones. Now, although the controller's fine, I'm not a massive fan of it. One, it's got power and speed. Now for me, I don't think you need two buttons and I'm always trying to change the speed by pressing the power button because I'm thinking power mode high, power mode low. 
it's got the acceleration direction, brake direction. For me, it's all a bit entry level, it's all a bit Amazon Eastgate, it doesn't need to be there. One button, nice and simple, that's what I want to see. Also, there's way too much information on that screen. You've got your Odo, you've got your how fast you're going, you've got the, what the board battery, you've got the remote battery. The only thing about the remote, <laughs> God, the only thing about the remote is the directional arrow that tells you which way you're going is really tiny. So I accidentally reversed it then, which is why I just did that. In fact, it's not actually the arrow that tells you the direction. In the bottom left, it says BW for backwards or FW for forwards. The Roadster X4 has a five amp hour battery with a manufacturer's range of 13 miles. There is also an X4S, which has an eight amp hour battery with a range of 18 miles. Apart from the range, the boards have identical performance. One thing that hasn't been great is the range. This board is meant to have a range oh, about 13 miles. Now I am using mainly the top speed setting, but I'm not really getting anywhere close to it. I'm probably getting about four. So as a commuting board, if you're gonna go more than say five miles and you weigh 100 kilograms, I probably wouldn't. The board weighs 9.3 kilograms, so it's not super heavy, but a handle makes a lot of sense on a hub motor board with semi off-road wheels. Because it does make a great commuter, it would also be nice if it was easier to carry. But I'm aware a lot of people don't like the handles on skateboards. What do you lot think about handles on skateboards? Do you like them? Let us know in the comments. However, it's quite a nice commuting board. Being a hub drive, you don't have to worry about belts getting tangled or snapping, so that's nice. It isn't the most torquiest, but it'll get you up to speed. Right, how's the Hover X1 getting on at following me? Right now, it's meant to be in dolly track mode, which means it's meant to stay in front of me, which it is, which is great. So hopefully it won't go behind. Um, I'm having some issues with the sound. I recorded about 15 videos and about two of them had sound. So now the great thing about the sound in the Hover X1 is that it removes the sound of the drone. Right now, the dolly track is working really well though. And even if sound isn't working, because the aim of this video is to make the whole video just for using this drone, footage from this drone, if you don't need to do that, so you're making a normal video, it is actually really good to get some good shots. When it comes to the Ooh. Vamax X4 Roadster, I actually like this. It's got a few issues. Hub motors aren't the most exciting motors, but as a commuter, it works really well. Ling Yi ESC, it's not the smoothest, but in a hub board, it's fine, it's not jerky or anything like that. But overall, I'm quite happy about it. You can have some fun on the Vamax X4 if you don't care so much about going fast. It seems well made and it's a good purchase for just over $400 when it's at its sale price or using my discount code VAlexVRC, I'll write it down in the description, where you can get $130 off the non-sale price. I don't think it works on the sale price, maybe you should just try it and let me know. The Hover X1 on the other hand is absolutely amazing. I had issues recording sound, sometimes it just didn't record any. I'm hoping that gets fixed in a future update, but that's not why I got it. The fact that I can have a tiny drone in my pocket which weighs half of the mini drones by DJI and I can have it in the air in less than a minute is an absolute game changer. It's £375 with two batteries and a charge hub which I think is a fantastic price. There's a link in the description if you want to find out more about it but rest assured this will not be the last you see of the Hover X1 on this channel. That was the Vamex X4 Roadster filmed exclusively with the Hover X1 automated drone, which is amazing as well. Even though it's been quite hard to make the entire video, it's brilliant and it's gonna get me some awesome shots really, really easy. And in a matter of seconds as well. Oh, the wind's taking it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And if you want more e-bike or e-skate content, don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, come back, come back, I ain't gone yet. Thanks for watching. Ride safe. That's a telephone. Ride safe. Come back, drone. Come on, drone.